Hi, I'm Natalie Manuel Lee, and I partner with my good friend, Dorian Renaud, who is the CEO and founder of Butterskin. We wanted to highlight the stories that continue to shape how we see ourselves, to shine a light on our inner beauty. Here is Beyond the Surface. Fabulous eyebrows. Same with you. <laughs> I'm so happy we're doing this. Me too. Thank me you too. for saying yes. Yes, of course. You are a prolific journalist. Oh, thank um, you. You currently work at E. When did you find your love for journalism? Uh, probably, I would say the love probably came in college. Mm -hmm. uh, well, high school. I was like working on the high school paper. Um, went to like a JC college first and worked on the high school paper there. So it was like print journalism and really getting invested in school and figuring out like what I liked and what I didn't like. And I would say when I transferred to the four-year university, San Francisco State, is when I started working in broadcasting. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really started to fall in love with like the camera and working and everything outside of print. So I, I would say probably like high school and college. High school. So in an interview that you did uh, with In Her Bag, you mentioned a, it seemed like a monumental paramount transition in your life where you moved to New York, you graduated from San Francisco State, you moved to New York, you came back home to California and you worked at Verizon Wireless. I did. And you thought you were gonna only be there for like a, probably a blip of a second, yes. but you ended up staying home for at least a few years. Four. Four years. So tell me that transitional period of you working at Verizon Wireless, knowing you have these dreams, knowing you have these aspirations, but you're here yeah. at Verizon Wireless, you know, serving people. Yeah. How did you keep the mentality of, you know what, this is going to serve me for the greater good, or did you not? I did it. Like, mm. I, I, when, you, when you're young, when you're like in your early 20s, you're just ignorantly arrogant. Mm -hmm. You know, you think that things are owed to you. You think like you're just going to like when I moved to New York, I was like, I'm going to be a BJ at MTV. Mm -hmm. No experience, no contacts. Like I didn't have, you know, I didn't have the tools to even be in front of the camera, but I wanted to be there mm -hmm. probably for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work out for me. And thank God it didn't. But when I came back to California, I kind of had my tail in between my legs and I still was like, no, I still want to do this thing. But I was just very lost about where I wanted to go. I needed to really focus on like what I wanted to be doing. Mm -hmm. And then also I had to like be okay with the idea that where I want to be is not exactly like going to be written the way I want it, the way I see it in my mind. And that's just kind of the discovery you make right. when you're young. Mm -hmm. When I started at the call center, I was like, I'm just gonna be here for a year. Like, I didn't take it seriously. I was horrible at my job. Like, I was getting in trouble clock all the time. In, clock out. They was like, yeah. you know, you taking too many breaks. And I was the worst employee for sure. Was it because you were bitter? It was because, I, to be quite honest, I did not fit there. Mm. And as a young woman with a degree, I kind of felt like I'm better than this, mm -hmm. you know? And that was probably also my first mistake because, mm. you know, the, their, it was sustaining people's lifestyles and their lives, and they it didn't make me any better than them. Mm -hmm. But for a little while, I had an air of arrogance of just like, I'm just only here for six months, and, you know, <laughs> I got my degree. Y'all ain't even been to school. And, you know, just very mm -hmm. stupid. Mm -hmm. And it got, I got humbled because then I, I got an apartment, I got a car, and then I kind of had what I call golden handcuffs, where it's like, yeah, you're making money, but you're kind of paying it just to survive and, like, to, mm -hmm. to make a living, but you're not really living. Mm. And then I was like, a year went by, two years. Now I'm getting like promoted. Mm. And I'm like, is this my career now? Am I in corporate America? Am I working mm. for a phone company? Like, didn't I want to work in TV? And then two years turned to four years. And then by the fourth year, I was very miserable. I was crying. I had given up my apartment. So I didn't have that anymore. But I just really wasn't in a good place. And I had honestly given up on being in TV and just kind of felt like it was too late. And at the time I'm in my 20s, so it wasn't too late. But in your 20s, now I'm in my late 20s and now I'm like, oh my God, I think I was 27 at the time. And I was like, I'm too old. Now I just gotta be here. I was in the Bay Area 
And my mom, one day I was crying. I was just like crying. I think I was on the computer crying at something. And she was just like, you know, you don't have to do this. Like, you can mm. just leave. Mm. <laughs> you don't have yeah. to. What are, you, what are you tied to here? You're not married. You don't have kids. Like, you don't need this for b- your bills. Like, what are you doing? And literally that weekend, I drove to L.A. and was like, let me go look at a place. So, okay. You're, do you feel like what ignited you to leave? Did you get comfortable at Verizon Wireless? I got do you comfortable think? in just like going to work, going out with my friends, going out, like, you know, partying and just you know, having money because I was broke in New York. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, got a little bit of cash. Like, I'm going to just, instead of saving and grinding, and I just kind of got caught up in just life, Mm -hmm. but not really living the life I wanted to live. It was just very much, I was okay, but I wasn't happy. But you weren't happy. No. Switching gears a bit, the last few years have been, whew, we've had a host of adversities, challenges, Mountains, valleys, all the things. And we know that when those things come, it can either be an invitation of, you know, just fear, doubt, uncertainty, or it can be an invitation of growth, self-awakening, self-awareness. Which invitation did you accept or did you accept both? I, I accepted growth. Mm-hmm. Um, probably not willingly at first. I was going, so when the pandemic happened, I was going through a lot. So when the pandemic happened, I was going through the end of a relationship that was many, many years. Mm. And so I was already kind of on this journey of like figuring things out and where I saw myself out of this relationship. Who was I? um, What, how did I want to be loved? More importantly, how did I need to love myself Mm. so that if people didn't love me the way that I needed, it wouldn't break me. And so that's kind of where it started for me. I started like re- getting therapy, um, reading, and just- Did you not have therapy before the pandemic? I had therapy, but it wasn't as, I probably didn't. I did it, but I probably didn't do the work, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, well, I'm doing therapy, but I probably you're wasn't- ac- You're accepting, but you're not walking mm-hmm. out the change behavior. I didn't do you- like what they call shadow work, I feel like. Yes. Um, until the pandemic and I was just by myself. Mm. And and then I went through like, this is cool. This is, I'm chilling for a little bit. And then probably by the summer of 2020, I was going through it. I was like, I kind of, you know how like when you clean your room and everything's sitting out before you can put it away, it's yeah. like the messiest. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, this is a lot of mess. Mm. And I also, in my previous relationship, I had put a lot of blame on this other person. And I had to be like, okay, where, where's my accountability? Where's, where, where did I, what choices did I make that resulted in this? And then that started applying to everything. Like that started applying to, at first I thought I was just getting help to heal from a relationship, but then it started to transcend more about what was I looking for? Where was I seeking validation? Why was I seeking that stuff? And it really kind of was like this flower that opened up that became a really beautiful experience to like discover myself. And I really fell in love with like who I was and my imperfections and Mm -hmm. things that I wanted to change before for reasons that had nothing to do with me, but like outside things. And I really learned this discovery. And while I'm doing this, I'm developing the clothing line. So I'm like really doing all this new, these new things. And I feel like my brain is working outside of the norm. Cause sometimes you get caught in these routines and you just kind of float. Yes. When you're challenged to do something new, your brain starts operating differently. And when you look at one thing different, everything starts to be, you look at it differently. And the complexities, you have a different way of looking. And so I really just went on this road of discovery for all, really 2020 and even 2021 Mm. of just like, in 2021, I really hit a stride where I just became the peace. I'd never been in a more peaceful place, never been in a place where I loved myself more, never been in a place where I was more sure about what I wanted. I hit that probably in like t- after about a good year of therapy. So do you believe that the pandemic served you well yeah. and that you're grateful for it? Well, I mean, you know, I feel so selfish because it was, a, I, I thrived during that, I, I, you know, my work did not suffer with the pandemic. I got more work. My clothing line is the number one selling clothes plus line at Macy's. Mm-hmm. It outsold the predictions by 60%. Wow. Um, it's, you know, we put something up, it sells out in hours. Like it's doing very, very well. So that was like, whoa, mm-hmm. you know? So it, I, I will say that the pandemic 
really showed me how to focus on what was important to me. And I applied those things to my life and it flourished from that. Mm -hmm. So would you do it all over again? Who child? <laughs> Ooh. I asked that because... I made so much banana bread. <laughs> oh. oh, no. <laughs> I ask it because we, you know, as a generation, we are so fixated on the next thing and we're yeah. so focused on wanting these things, but don't realize, like, when we ask and we pray to God saying, hey, this is what I want, yeah. this is what I desire, and then... He gives us the desires mm -hmm. of our heart, but in order to get there, we first have to go through the troubled yeah, waters. You do. He doesn't take us through the troubled waters to drown us. Yeah. He takes us through them to cleanse us. Yes. So it sounds like you have been cleansed yes. so that it you was can, yes. It was really hard. It mm -hmm. probably the, the last two years inwardly have mm. been so difficult because I had to look at myself for the things I had contributed to in my yep. life. And that is not fun. That is, Same. that is not fun to be like, bitch, it might be you. <laughs> Literally, we were talking about that. I was like, you know, when you look, you can look, you can see it in everybody yeah. else. But when it's time for you to look yeah. at yourself, you're like, oh, wait, yeah. there's no, there's absolutely no way that that's yeah. me. Okay, wait, is it? Oh, right. wait. Oh, I might do it a little bit. I did bit that subtle. kicking and screaming. Yeah. I, and, and, you know, I, I went kicking it's and painful. screaming. It was very painful. Um, and it wasn't any, I did not enter it lightly. I I put it on the shelf. I denied it. And then one day I just, you know, you have these like epiphanies. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't remember what I was watching or reading, but it was, it was definitely God trying to be like, this, we talking about you. And, and I was like, I think, I think I need to think, I think I need to, you know. And the funny thing is, you don't need to heal from it to be better. I think a lot of people think, well, if I recognize I have these issues, then I have to heal from it to be this changed person. What, what sometimes changes you is just the acknowledgement of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you, if once you get out of denial and acknowledge, hey, this is how I'm operating, mm -hmm. that's all you need to do to start changing. Yes, you have to accept it. You have to accept that, yes, I'm doing these things. Mm -hmm. And I had this conversation with my therapist because I was like, I'm not this person. I know I've done these things, but I'm not this person. And she was like, well, if you've done those things, that's, that's, that, you are that person. She was like, no, you are. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, no, I mean, I've said these things, I've done these things, but that doesn't mean. And she was like, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is not who you have to stay. How did you accept it? Um, I, I stopped talking to her for a little bit. <laughs> so you got no. offended. You yeah, were I like, did. I was like, I don't, I'm not talking to her anymore. Like I had time away from my therapist. Like I was like, no. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, damn, did I just fire my therapist? Cause she told me the truth. And then I thought, do I do that to people in my life? <sighs> And then I was like, let me Nina, call Nina, you go in there. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so once, she, was she kind of like, I was waiting for you to call me yeah, back? Yeah, she was fine. We follow each other on Instagram. She was like, I check in on you. Like it's, and, and I have a very strong personality mm -hmm. and I'm very direct. Mm -hmm. And if, if I'm dealing with you, you know it. And if I'm not, you know it. And mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to tell you. I'm, I'm not a confrontational person, but I just don't feel like I have time in my life to play around. Yeah. And like, kind of hold you passively in my life. Like, mm -hmm. you either in it or you're not. Like, yeah. and I have a conversation with one of my good friends because she's like, you don't just have friends for just, like, brunch or you don't just have, like, light. And I'm like, no. Like, you mm -hmm. either my homegirl yeah. and we friends, friends, mm -hmm. or we not. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we can be acquaintances and say hello, but I'm very much all-in type of person. Mm -hmm. um, but also, like, I've just had to learn how to, like, really accept and listen and hear people. And even if I don't agree, I feel like they are entitled to their feelings. Mm -hmm. And I have to process how sometimes I make people feel. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's that was a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and also we don't have to be married to this is who I am. Like yeah. there, there are ways where you can approach things differently. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important to also highlight that a lot of times the journey, we think that it's about becoming, mm -hmm. but in a lot of times it's about unbecoming. Yeah, it it's is. about unbecoming the yeah. things that, you know, the learned behaviors that we've potentially have learned. Yeah. Or, and that's literally the season that I'm walking in now. Yeah. It's like, oh, wait, wow, I've learned that. Oh, ooh, that, it, mm, yeah. you know. And, and even things that are, are good, like sometimes like I'm a over, I, Today, I had a stressful day, mm -hmm. um, and I was explaining to you how I was stressed out, and I had a friend who was like, you know, you're taking on problems that are not yours to solve. And even when you think you're helping, like, I don't think that's a toxic thing to mm -hmm. be, like, trying to mm -hmm. help solve these issues, but it's toxic to me. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? You're right. Let me let this go. This isn't my issue to solve. And I think especially when you're a woman and you're a boss, like, you just feel like, well, 
things could run so much smoother if people just did X, Y, and Z. Why y'all not listening to me? But sometimes it's just about letting people figure it out and not having to be the one to tell everybody what they need to be doing. And that's a lesson that I'm still learning just because I just naturally am a leader. But sometimes leading is listening and, and letting other people figure out how to make something happen so that they're not always dependent upon you to fix the problems. And leading is to make, to allow other people to lead. Yeah. And and to trust other people mm-hmm. to do, you know, what they feel like they can do. And I've had that issue with my clothing line because I was micromanaging because I, I was like, my name is on this. Yes. And it was like, I have to trust these people to enact these things. And, and I'm like, am I being a good leader if I'm down their necks every five minutes about this thing and that thing. And once I kind of released that a little bit, things did run smoother. And people, you know, will communicate with you more if you just get, let's give them a little room to breathe. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. What do you believe kept you sane during the pandemic? Ooh, chow. <laughs> I'll probably say like my friends, my friendships and my family, mm-hmm. um, especially because when I entered the pandemic, I had been in a relationship. So I was used to a full house. Mm. And so God really cleared the way so I had to be quiet and still. Mm. It went from like chaos and toxicity as distractions mm. to just quiet. And I was like used to the toxicness of life. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to just be in a place of peace. Wow. I didn't, I felt peace felt like loneliness at first. That loneliness, that loneliness bone, mm-hmm. that's that that loneliness that's when you bone make a lot is of real. Reckless. Yes. And I realized that one of the reasons my old relationship lasted for as long as it did is because every time I did get that moment of quiet, I would go back because I was misdiagnosing what it was. Mm. And when I made that final decision to just sit and and be still, things, you, you know, you almost feel like, am I tripping? Like, mm-hmm. you almost see things, you see signs, you see things, and you're like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is, is God really talking to me? Like, what is going on? Like, I'll get a call. Or even recently, I had a girlfriend call me out the blue. And she was like, hey, you know, I was just thinking about you. And how's everything going with some, such and such? And it was just like, I needed this right now. But if I'm so busy trying to distract myself, you really do miss these things where that you need to sit down and sometimes focus on. Mm-hmm. So that's really what it did for me. It allowed me to be still. What do you feel like peace? What does peace to you feel like? Because a lot of times people are like, okay, I want to, you know, obviously the bag is actually peace, but what if someone doesn't even know what they're looking for yeah. to, to embark on peace? For me, I, I, I literally will ask myself questions sometimes out loud. Like, because I started to get overcommitted. You know, it's like the more successful you get, the more you start to get pulled in 15 different directions. So I would have be overcommitted or I would have to, you know, have a dinner that I need to go to or a birthday or whatever. And I literally started asking myself, like I'd be getting ready to be like, do you want to go to this? <laughs> I would ask myself, mm-hmm. like, what do you want? Mm-hmm. Or sometimes, like, if I'm having a self-care day, I'm like, what's, what's, what do you want to do today? And it would just be like, I just want to binge and eat cookies. And, like, whatever that felt, whatever peace to me is different depending upon the day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just rest. Sometimes it is in shopping. Sometimes it depends. Mm-hmm. And so I don't, it doesn't have to, self-care and peace doesn't have to be the same to everybody. But for me, it's ultimately doing what pleases me and what brings me joy. Yeah. And that can be different things. Yeah. You know, some days a nice day of work is peace for me because I'm like, I feel so accomplished. But sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, during the break, it was just like, I just need a couple of days to sleep past a certain time. That was peace. Yeah, that's good. You know, but acknowledging what it means to me and how it feels me. What old are you going to leave behind and what new are you going to carry in into the new year? For me, I'm, I'm learning just to talk to myself the way I want others to talk to me because I think we can be so harsh in our heads to ourselves. Mm-hmm. I have like this mirror in my living room that I have to walk past to get to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And I used to walk past it, you know, no bra on or whatever. And I'll be like, oh, this is just, you look this way or you, you know, you need to do this. Don't go in there and grab this. Like I would, there was this voice that was so nasty to myself. Wow. And then I thought, well, what happens if I just flip it and start saying kind things to myself every time I walk past this mirror? Like, okay, girl, that booty looking cute. Like, <laughs> you know, some, say something nice to myself every time I walk past. And what I found was the nicer I talked to myself, even if I didn't mean it, the nicer I talked to myself and would stick with it and refuse to say these negative things, people on my outward life started saying those things to me. 
Wow. And the meaner I was to myself, the more I attracted people who said those things to me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so if it starts with me, Mm -hmm. then I have to be that loving being to myself so that if it does come, someone does come at me sideways, it won't even affect me. But if I'm agreeing with them, then it's gonna hurt me more. Yeah, that's good. What if someone watching right now looks just like you, plus size model, and doesn't feel good about themselves, doesn't feel like they are checking the boxes society wants, but how do they embrace that beauty? Because you've embraced it. I mean, you are a stunning individual, but a lot of women don't see that this is what beauty is in the world. I didn't see it either for myself. And I remember going back and looking at pictures because, you know, the pandemic, you're going through old phones. Mm-hmm. You, I think I was looking at pictures from like three years ago and I was like, dang, I look so pretty. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I don't want another three years to go by and look at pictures from this year and be like, well, what was I talking about about myself? I think we are so hard on ourselves and this life is not as long as we think it is. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I just, am, I have committed to not spending any more time being bad to who I am. I'm like, these hands work, these legs work every morning. There are so many people who would love to be in the position that I'm in. Like, I need to stop trying to be somewhere else and just be here and be still and just appreciate and love where I'm at. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I really wanted to like who I was. How did you to, get there though? I think I just made the decision that I was no longer going to be at war with myself because it hadn't done anything for me. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, what is what have I gained from this other than being miserable and making bad decisions for validation? Mm-hmm. Because I started to think like, why am I, I started to wonder like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And I was like, oh, I need to be validated. And then it made me feel like, what do you need this validation for? What, why do you need this? And that goes back to things from childhood. And that was my stuff to figure out. But if somebody is looking at this and they're trying to get there, I think it's okay to acknowledge you're not there. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay to say, this is how I feel about myself. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I believe that it's also rooted in what you believe your identity is rooted in. You know what I mean? I mean, Mm -hmm. for me, I believe my identity is rooted in the creator. Yeah. You know, I know that I'm more than enough. I know that I'm more than a conqueror because of him. And so, you know, personally for me, it's like when I have those days of, oh, you ain't this, you ain't that, the shame, the look, the feel, my skin, the this, it's like, okay, wait, hold up. Right. (laughs) Actually... (laughs) I am who he says I am. Yeah. I am a daughter of the king and you know, but it is hard. It's it's not it's difficult. Yeah, and it's and it's like I had to stop seeking it outside of me. And that was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Because I was really nervous being single. I wasn't married, but I was in a relationship for like seven years. So it, being single now was a completely different experience. And then the pandemic is there. So you're like, I'm like, okay, dating is completely different than when I was single before. Like, how do I transition into this? And there were so many things that I'm like, okay, I, I don't want kids. Like, mm-hmm. I, that's not my ministry. Like, right. you know, yeah. I, that's not, that's, that's not, not my not, ministry. Not, I don't want kids. For me. <laughs> no judgment to anybody else. That's not for me at this big age. Yes. Like, I'm like, I'm not doing that. So there were things where I was like, okay, this is, this is, I was trying to think about like, it was so intimidating. And then I was like, okay, now how, are, how am I going to be received? And, mm-hmm. th- and then I was so worried about if men were going to like me. And then I started dating. I was like, I don't even like them. Yeah. I was like, let me reframe. I was like, I got to like you, mm-hmm. you know? And so it was just once I stopped feeling bad or good, because there were days I'd feel like the baddest. Mm-hmm. And because I had good interactions and w- good dates. But I was like, this can be taken away from me with one bad conversation. So I don't want to bank everything off of other people or if people think I look pretty on TV. And I, a co-host of mine made this comment once that said, you can't believe people when, you can't believe when you're getting showered with adoration and then you can't believe when they all hate you. Like you can't. That's good. You can't, when they're singing your praises, Mm -hmm. you have to be mindful and accept it and feel great. But like you you can't put your whole identity into that because if it flips, which we know it does. Yeah, it's fleeting. It's it's such a fleeting thing to put your validation in other people. That's why you cannot. That's yeah. why it, you're literally, yeah. it, personally, what I believe is your identity and your validation is in the one that created you. Yeah. You didn't create me. The, yeah. the crew didn't create and me. Nobody else. Too. You know? Because I, I, for a very long time, now, when, now that I've made this transition into fashion and really feeling like I'm seeing people in a more raw space, I started to think like, 
of course you start thinking of, okay, I want to do this, I want to expand. And sometimes with that expansion, you have to take time off from other things. And I thought to myself, if I stop doing TV for a little bit, my initial thought was panic. Mm. Because I've been doing TV for 15 years. I've been on a network television show every year for 15 years. Wow, like, yeah. I have not stopped working. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, if I take time off, like, who am I? Like, and I was like, I can't have my identity tied up into this. I can't have my identity. I can't feel less of a woman or a person if, this, if I'm off the air. Like, I, I can't, that can't be tied to my spirit. Mm-hmm. And so then I had to do more searching. So this is like an ever-growing process because yeah. I still don't have the answer to that. I still think about that. But I do know that like it can't ever be tied up into being validated in any way yeah. because it's just so easy for it to go away. And speaking of that, obviously the world knows you as a journalist, fashion designer. If all of those things, if those labels fell off, mm-hmm. who would you be? I mean, you know, either way, I, I've, I've always said this, I'm a builder. Like if everything got taken away from me tomorrow, I'm building a new, I'm building it all back up again. Mm. You know, I'm, I believe that my tenacity is unmatched. You know, I don't think that I'm the smartest. I don't think I'm the most charismatic, but I do believe that I have a way to connect with people mm-hmm. that has been a blessing for me. And that connecting is just like literally could be in the grocery store. It could be, you know, I have ability to see people mm-hmm. and to love Mm-hmm. You know, and love has been such a constant in my life. And for so long, I've been worried about the absence of it mm-hmm. instead of just being and, and appreciating my ability to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to be able to do that more. Mm-hmm. And however that is seen fit for the time that I'm in, and I understand that can change. Yeah. But, you know, I want to be the best daughter, sister, friend. And ultimately, it is very important to me to be a good person. You know, someone that... When I'm gone, people can look at and be like, this, this, this was a person who did her best yeah. to, to do good while she was here. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, is more important mm-hmm. than anything. Mm-hmm. And so there's so much that goes on that people don't see in this, like, Instagram world. And to me, that's important that the people that I love know it mm-hmm. and know that there is, there is not going to be anybody else that loves them fiercely mm-hmm. the way in, in the most rawest form yeah. than, than I do. Yeah. And I believe that, you know... What are the, when they say that you are who you are behind closed doors yeah. and you are in front of people. Yeah. And I think if we put more emphasis on who we are mm-hmm. as opposed to what we do, mm-hmm. we would be happier. Yeah. You know? And, and not needing, you know, we see like these people on Instagram with piles of money and, you know, and it's just, and there's so many people I see chasing that for those, that, that validation. And, and once you get there, it's, it's very empty too. You know what I mean? There's, there's a lot of people who I know who got, who have that and they're still searching. Like the, you can, it, it's more comfortable, but it's still very lonely for a lot of people. And my goal is to be able to really kind of be in that healthy space mentally. And then when things come, you know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. You know? Here at Butta, we are very big on self-care. You mentioned earlier your self-care might be shopping. Yes. Your self-care might be eating cookies when you don't, <laughs> when you want to. <laughs> what else do you do for self-care? Um, you know, it just, for me, like, I'm in TV, so I love, you know, getting lost in these, like, fantasy worlds and watching and binging. But, you know, I also just, I enjoy cooking. I enjoy, like, I'm very much, you know, I'm a Libra. I, I'm a luxury girl. Like, I want a bubble bath. I want, you know, a massage. Like, I, for me, it means taking care of me, of my vessel too, yeah. um, so that I'm feeling comfortable. And also, like, reading. Like, you know, feeling feeling like I'm feeding myself. Mm-hmm. Because I think if I can, I can grow, I can help, if I'm helping one other person do it, then it means something. Then that's enough. Yeah. That's enough. What's next? <sighs> You know, I, it's hard for me to talk about next because I, I am still working on enjoying the present. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, expansion, you mm-hmm. know, obviously, like, my clothing line is doing really well. So for me, um, expanding that into a lot of different areas is, is really my goal to really kind of 
make this a global brand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have some projects, the TV projects that'll be coming out too. So just, you know, trying to be patient and just appreciate where I'm at. I think about that girl that came as a PA that didn't know anybody and she would be like, what? You know, so I try not to get caught up in like the pitfalls because I remember I prayed for where I'm at right now. Ooh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. That was fantastic.